What's up, my brothers? What's up, people? What's up? This is your boy, K-Solo. You already know. I don't got to introduce myself because you guys already know who the fuck I am. <laughs> so what's up, people? Listen, I'm coming with a story. Come and give you guys a story. Haven't done that in a while. And no question, the story's about Rikers Island. No question about that. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the story's about Rikers Island. And keeping it real with you. You know, just like many other people, just like many, many people, just like many Puerto Ricans, blacks, we think that white boys can't fight. Somehow, somewhere, we think that white boys are pussies. But this story that I'm about to tell you guys is no such thing. I mean, you got a lot of white boys out there that get busy. Ain't no question about that. No question about that. I, it's proven. I've seen white boys get busy. Um, there's white boys, months Latin kings, just like they got blacks that are Latin kings. But I, like I said, I used to call them black kings. You feel me? So the thing that the, the, the theory that we got about white white guys that and white girls that they can't fight. Uh, they weak, they scared, uh, they scared of Puerto Ricans, they scared of blacks, and and they're gonna run and and whatever the fuck. That's what we think, until we see a white boy that gets busy, or we get into a white boy that gives us a competition. You know, what I'm saying that gives us the, the you know, what I'm saying that that's that's right there with you, that that could fight just like you, that gets busy just like you. So all that shit about white boys or pussies and all that, no. No, don't don't believe that. I right, guys don't believe that. Now, what I'm about to tell you is about this white boy. They do call him Goomba. Now, Goomba is supposed to be an Italian word. I I believe Goomba is supposed to be an Italian word. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what they used to call him. This dude was in Rikers Island, and this was C73. Rikers Island, C73, the old woman house. You feel me? The old woman's house. And 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 I only been there one time. No, actually twice. I got thrown out of there once. I got the first time going to to the woman's house that I call the woman's house, but it's really now is C seventy three. So the first time I went to C seventy three, the woman's house, they kicked me out. They found me with a razor and my sneakers and and I didn't even know I had that razor and my sneakers. I just got locked up. I only was in jail in Rikers Island like for about three days and I, I even got searched and then never found that razor and there was it was in a pair of, of, of Fila's Fila sneakers and believe it or not and the CEOs that search my shit in C74 they didn't know about the Fila sneakers that the Fila sneakers you could take out the tongue the thumb you know I mean the inside the sole you could take it out and I believe Fila's was the first sneakers that you could take out the, the sole and you could replace it yeah, I believe though, because Adidas, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do that with none of the sneakers, Pumas, Adidas, uh, uh, Reeboks, none of that shit. You could do it with the Felas. So anyway, the razor was there. So, you know, that's my story with C73. But then again, when I got locked up again, like about a year later, two years later, whatever the fuck, I went to C73, this time from C74 to C73. And, and I didn't really like C73, but I was there. I had to make it, you know what I'm saying? So anyway... What happened was in season three that I got in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? I got in trouble. Uh, simple reason is that I that 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 me and this five uh, percenter, not gonna name, not gonna name, because you know saying I don't, you know, I haven't seen him in years, so I don't want to, you know, put him out there, shit like that. But he was a five percenter, and me and him was good friends, good fucking friends. And I mean, we met in C seventy three and C seventy four when we came in. And we still friends like that all the way to C74. We had each other's back. And then next thing you know, when he, when he sent it to C73, me and him went together. And of course, we was friends. And um, nigga, nigga Blue Trial, he had like he had to do like 15 years, man. I remember that. Definitely remember that. Me, I, I just had to go to C76. I did a year. I, not, never a year. I did not. They, they sent this to me to six months. After six months, you do four. And four and a half. And it was four months and three years probation. That's what I got. Skip it. But... My man and shit, 15 years, man. I heard about that when, when I came home. He was still fighting the case, and uh, they gave him 15 years, man. You know, I feel bad for him, but I'm pretty sure he's out now. That was a while back. That was like in, uh, what year was that? That was in, if I'm not mistaken, that was like 80, 
87, no. 87, 89, 87, 88, 89, 87, 87. I remember 87, yeah, because I was, I was chilling, I was seeing Edie, me and Edie was living together, Edie was my, the love of my life, no question about that. But um, yeah, it was in, in 87. So anyway, you know, when I go, when, I, when I'm in that house and shit like that, we're doing things, you know what I'm saying, I got in trouble. So of course, getting in trouble was getting 30 days in the box. It was, 30 days. it was 30 days. I think it was 30 days. And see, back in that time, back in that time, you couldn't get away with murder. I'm serious. In, Rik in Rikers Island, back in that time, you would punch a CO in the face and nothing would happen. Nothing would happen. You, you, okay, they might give you another case. They might give you another case, but it was a what, a, a year? It was a bullet. A bullet or six months to punch a CO in the face. Now, you don't get that. Now you're getting motherfucking what? Uh, four and a half to something or five or something. I mean, they got it all over Rikers Island. Everywhere you look in the, in the war, you hit the CO, you're getting an eight and third to 25, some shit like that. You cut the CO, you get an eight and third to 25. You hit the CO, you get a two to four, something like that, or three and a half to six. Yeah, they got rough. That's why a lot of COs nowadays, they think they all that. But back in the days, I swear to God, I swear to everything I love, bro. They respect the inmate. They respect the inmate because they know that the inmates could have got away with a lot of shit. And and then when nothing happened to them, you understand what I'm saying? What the fuck is a year? What the fuck is six months if you knock a CEO out? I mean, not only you knock a CEO out and you get the you get the, the privilege to knock that nigga out, while the niggas, you know, if you got an asshole CEO, you no know, question about that. And a lot of CEOs out there, they, they really fucking assholes. You know what I'm saying? Like real scumbag motherfuckers. And I mean, don't get me wrong, not all CEOs. We got a lot of CEOs out there that they get busy, man. That they, they got a lot of CEOs that they don't look out. You know, they give you cigarettes. Uh, back in that time, we needed that shit. Because back in that time, commissary was good. Commissary was cigarettes. You cannot compare the commissary to commissary right now uh, to the commissary back in the 80s and early 90s. And the 90s. And, 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 and 80s and 90s. You can't not compare the commissary. No way in the world. It was a thousand times better. Anyway, as a matter of fact, put it like this. If they would have had the commissary they had back in the 80s and the 90s and had the cigarettes... I would have done no problem. I would have done my last parole violation in the island. Yes, I would have. No, no, no question about that. I mean, you know, it's the fucked up that you got to go to jail and you can't smoke cigarettes. That's bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? So just imagine if they would bring cigarettes back to the island. A lot of a lot of dudes that are stressed out, that shit would stop. That shit would stop if people would have the, the opportunity to smoke a cigarettes again. So what they should have is house a house that you can't smoke and a house that you, if you're a smoker, you got to go to that house. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So, anyway, back to the story. So, I'm facing 30 days in the box. Summertime. I ain't don't want, I ain't trying to go to no fucking box in the summertime. I mean, the shit in yourself could get easily to 105 to 110 degrees, bro. No fucking bullshit. Okay, guys? This is in your fucking cell. The only time you might get a little coolness is at nighttime and not even. Let me tell you, bro. I used to take myself, when I used to go to the box or something like that, and it was in the summertime, and I and, and that's why I know that I can't, I can't fuck with the box in the summertime because I can't take it. What I used to do is I used to make a, t uh, uh, a curtain from the cell because in your cell, you got little openings. You feel me? There's a little opening. And, and, and you can put a little, you know, and they can see right through your cell. So what I used to do was I had to put a little a little curtain and sleep butt fucking naked. No fucking question about that. I had to take the sheet, just put it over top of my balls and shit like that. Like that, no CO, no gay ass CO could see my, you know, see, see my balls and shit. So I had to put like a sheet at the top of my shit and just try to sleep. And if I couldn't sleep, I had to sleep in the fucking floor. Wet my fucking towel with cold water, rinse it out like Rinse it, rinse it, and throw that shit on the floor and lay it right on top of that fucking towel while it was wet, moist, cold, moist, because it was too fucking hot. But anyway, I, this happened, you know, I got in trouble because of what I did. So uh, basically, I go to Bean Court because you got, you got a Bean Court and shit like that in Rikers Island. So when I went to Bean Court, of course, they hit me with the fucking 30 days. I was like, fuck, now I got to go to the box, man. I got to go to the box now, man. I mean, come on, it's fucking hot. You understand what I'm saying? Hot. So, I did what many, many other people used to do. That's how I got the idea. You understand? And the idea was try to make believe that you could take it and you want to hang up. 
You feel me? You make believe that you want to hang up. So what happens is that when, that when you see, this is how it was. They got a suicide, a suicide watch. I'm pretty sure you guys know the suicide. I said it a couple of times I had that job too. The suicide is a dude that watches, that watches, you know, people in their cells and stuff like that. Make sure you don't hang up. And usually they had to get that job to an inmate. So the inmate that had the job, I knew him. You know what I'm saying? I knew the dude. So I was like, yo, come over here, man. Yo, this is, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make believe I'm going to fucking hang up. All right? But when I do that, you're going you're gonna, to you know, you're gonna pass my cell. I said, wait like two, three minutes. You're going to pass my cell. You're going to make believe that I'm, I'm going to make believe that I'm hanging up. And you're going to call the CO. Yo, CO, crack the cell, blah, blah, blah. This nigga's hanging up. So that's what they would do. You know, the CO would scream at you, CO, 10 cells hanging up, 10 cells hanging up. So what they do is they crack your cell. The inmate goes in, the, the SPA goes in, holds you by the leg, picks you up like that. You don't keep choking up to the CO runs and cut the fucking line. You understand what I'm saying? That was that was the thing. So, and not only that, not only that, you will make $50. No, no bullshit. If you would say, if you save an inmate from hanging up, the, 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 the suicide will get 50 fucking dollars placed in his account. And if you catch him and if he dies, whatever the fuck, and you see him and he's hanging, unfortunately he dies, you you you, you will get $25 if you tell the CEO, crack itself, you know what I'm saying, you know, this guy's dead, you hold him by the, the same thing, like if he was alive, like if he was kicking, hanging, you, you know, you tell the CEO, blah, 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 and the CEO comes, cut you down. I mean, cut the, cut the, cut the rope down. Even though you're dead, you still make $25. Ain't that a bitch? And it's all about timing. It's all about, like, like what they, what Rikers Island doesn't want is somebody to hang up and stay there like five, six, seven hours just hanged. You know what I'm saying? Because when that happens, the body gets stiff like a motherfucker. It's like, 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 you like, like a cardboard and shit. Like, like, it's like a fucking, rock, like, a, like a tree. It's like a fucking tree. You're stiff. You can't do shit. Especially when you hang. You understand what I'm saying? When you hang. You can't, you're just stiff, bro, and, and it's crazy look. It's, it's a crazy look. I was an SPA, and I seen a dude hang up in C-74, young kid. I'm not going to say his name either, but um, I was working, in, and um, it was in um, Six Main. Six Main? Or Six or six Lower? I don't know. It was Six Main, Six Lower that I remember this kid hanged up. I was in the day room. I was looking at TV. It was not my fault. It's not my fault because I just finished doing my rounds. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm looking at all the cells. Everything's okay. This That that kid, the one that hanged up, you know, I I, I felt I, I like a little bit, it was a little bit my fault, man. I ain't going to lie, man, because I should have seen this kid. I should have kept on walking because every time I did my rounds, you know, you got to do your rounds every 15 minutes. So the last time I did my rounds, this kid was, you know, every time I was doing my round, this kid was still up. You know what I'm saying? So I should have, I should have, I should have just like try to talk to him and see where he was at, give him a cigarette and see where he was at. And I didn't do that. I didn't do that, but that's okay. You know what I mean? It was not my, you know, it's not my fault that whatever happened, happened. Man. God bless him. You know? So anyway, so now the five percenter, you know, he, he agrees with me. He's down with it. So he breaks out. He does the same thing. I, I mean, he did it right to the T. Right, right what I, I told him to do, he did it. So now he's walking by myself. I don't got the fucking rope around my neck. I'm just holding this shit like this, waiting for the nigga to pass myself. When he passes myself, he looks at me. I look at him, I shake my head like a head. That nigga say, CO, crack blah, 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 cell. Crack this nigga's cell. The nigga's hanging up. He's about to hang up. He's about to hang up. So when the CO cracks my cell, whoa, you see the cell open up. Boom, the dude comes inside. I'm over here like, good, yo, good acting, nigga. You, you, you got to get an Oscar for that shit. <laughs> no question. You got to get an Oscar for that shit, dude. So anyway, the dude is like, yo, man, what's wrong with you, man? So come on, man. Yo, Junebug. Yo, that's what they used to call me, Junebug. Yo, Junebug, man, you crazy, man. Yo, what the fuck's wrong with you? Ah, he fronting. You know what I'm saying? Skills coming, running. Over there. Da, 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 da. He's running. The A officer and the B officer is running towards me. I'm like, this is shit. That's when I put the rope around me. You know what I'm saying? When, when he comes in, when, the, when the inmate comes in, the suicide goes in my cell, I put on the rope. You know, make it look good. So, the CO comes in. What the fuck wrong with you? They cursing. What the fuck wrong with you? Yeah, you crazy. You fucking young. You don't need to do that shit. And I'm like, you know, and I'm over here fronting. Nah, man, leave me alone. I can't. I'm fucking, I can't. I can't. I can't handle this shit no more. You know. Oscar goes to solo. <laughs> so, I'm over here. Ah, you know what I'm saying? So, what they do, they send you to the clinic. They send you to the clinic to go see a psych. 
and they have to have they have to have a psych in the premises at all times. Now, where the fuck is my okay right here? They gotta have a psych in the premises at all time, at all times. You feel me? So, the psych, you know, the psych comes crazy, motherfuckers. I mean, all psychs are retarded and crazy. I think they're more crazy than us, bro. So the psych comes. I look at this nigga. who's a Chinese fucking psych, a Chinese motherfucker, Chinese or Japanese, whatever the fuck he was. Mm. He comes in, fucking thick ass glasses, something like my glasses. He sits down. He starts talking to me like, "What's wrong?" And I'm looking at this nigga, and, and I know, and I gotta ask him the right way. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, "What you mean? What's wrong? I'm just tired of living, man. I'm just tired of living. I can't take it no more. I'm in jail. I'm fucking tired. I'm facing time. Um, you know, I, I just, I just keep." It keeps bothering me. It keeps bothering me. Like, what keeps bothering you? The fucking voices, man. The voices that I'm hearing. What the voices are telling you? Well, what you think they tell me? They tell me to fucking hang up. They tell me to kill myself. They tell me that I'm no good. They tell me that I'm gonna go do 30 years. What you in here for? I'm in here for selling drugs. You're not gonna do 30 years. You know, this is what, what the psychiatrist is trying to tell me. You know, he's trying to talk me to calm myself down, to to see to see the clear point of it. I'm trying to make it look like the world is not over for you, man. I mean, come on, buddy. You ain't gonna do no 30 years, man. You're gonna buy a year, two years, whatever, you're gonna go home. That's what the that's what the psychiatrist is trying to run me. You feel me? He's trying to run that shit by me. But I'm sticking to my guns. I'm like, nah, I can't take it. What happens? The nigga recommends for you to go to an MO house. A MO house is people that are really fucked up in the head. And I'ma tell you something right now, guys. I'ma tell you definitely right now what's going on. In the MO houses, at uh let's say 30, 30, what is it, 33 people in, in a house? Out of 33 people in the house, I'm gonna keep it fucking fishy with you. Out of 33 people in the house, I say like three of them. Three dudes. Needs, needs, needs the help. Three dudes are severely fucked up in the head. And I don't understand how these dudes could go to jail, man. I don't understand how they're going to put people like that in jail because I really fucking don't. But out of 33 motherfuckers, probably three motherfuckers really need the fucking psychiatrist, really need the medication. They really fucked up mentally. Now, you got another motherfucking 20% that are there because they're trying to get away from court. You feel me? They are there because they're trying to fight their case and say that they was, you know, bugging out. Oh, wow. They're trying to play the crazy shit. And then the other half are there because they pussies. Because they can't live in population. So they want to go to the MO house and live love, love. And, and, and take shit from the MO people, from the crazy people, from, or from the people that can't fight for themselves. You understand what I'm saying? So when I got to that, when, when they finally put me in that house, that I'm in that house, I mean, uh, I think it was side, side A, side. I, I, I really know it was A one, A two. I think it was A one, A two. And I was, I, I was, I was in one of those years back. I was in one of those houses. Okay. Now the other house that's right next to me, you got A one, you got A two. Whatever house I was at, in the other, the other house, there was this dude, white dude, a skinhead, a real fucking skinhead, bro. The nigga. Real fucking redneck skinhead motherfucker with a Nazi, bro, with a Nazi tattoo in his fucking arm, bro. No bullshit. And this motherfucker was big, bro. This nigga was, you know what I'm saying? This dude was like about. I was. I was. Somewhere on. I was like about 18. I was like about 18. 17 to 18. No, not 17. I was like about 18, 19, some shit like that. And this dude. This dude was like about about my age, or maybe 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 a year older. My age, but maybe maybe a year older. If, if I was like eighteen, this dude had to be like nineteen years old. You know what I'm saying? And that back or oh, nineteen or twenty. And back at that time, uh, they started putting guys that have, that reached the age of nineteen. They go to the adults. You understand what I'm saying? They go to the adults. It used to be all the way to twenty one. If you're twenty one years old, you you know you you, you tw once once you hit twenty one. You go to the doors. You added a C seventy four shit, so you gotta go to the doors because you you now now you're an adult. You understand what I'm saying? Twenty one. You're in the fuck. You're fully adult. So, I believe this guy was in his twenties. Big motherfucker, though. I'm talking about solid dude. Be a nigga, 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 nigga was a real fucking white boy. That was a white boy mountain motherfucker. Big motherfucker that that fucking breaks watermelon with their ass cheeks, <laughs> something like that. So, I'm in the other side. And I'm hearing about this nigga Goomba. 
I'm heavy in Bagumba, man, and everybody's talking about Goomba. Yo, that nigga, that's Goomba's house. That nigga don't play. And back and, and, and once again, this is what I'm saying, that I was like, I couldn't believe it. Because I'm like, yo, this nigga's a fucking white boy, bro. I'm like, what you mean, Goomba? Yo, that nigga sound like a white boy. Nigga said, yo, no, he is white, Solo. He's one of, I don't know if he's Italian or I don't know if he's Irish, but niggas call him Goomba, but Goomba is an Italian name. So... They do. They did tell me up, but the nigga is fucking racist. They got a Nazi sign and all that shit. And I'm like, but hold up, man. Ain't nobody tried this nigga, man. They're like, yo, dude's tried, but he's he's he's, he's a big motherfucker. He's strong. He, you know, he does his thing. You know what I'm saying? So this is what I'm getting. I'm getting from the other side, the house that I'm in. That this nigga over here, he runs shit. He, he's the he's he's the he's the motherfucking oppressor. You feel what I mean? And it's a fucking white boy. And I'm somewhere down in my head, I'm thinking that white boys ain't supposed to have that position. They're not supposed to have that position. No way in the fucking world. That's a black man's position or Puerto Rican position or Dominican, whatever. Minority. Not no white dude's gonna hold a fucking jail down. Are you fucking crazy? That's what I was thinking. And many other people thought of things like that things like that. Just because you're white, you ain't gonna get busy. That's bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? That's bullshit. So Boom, I come up, you know I gotta smoke the blunt. I come up, right, and I become, I, I, I was in the house for about, I stood in the house for like about a month and a half. And you know what I'm saying? Because once, once you were there past 30 days, everything, that, that ticket that you got, it, it, it goes out the window. No more. So, so right after 30 days, you can go right back to the population. You know what I'm saying? You tell the CEO, yo, CEO, let me get out of here. You know what I'm saying? I want to get, not even the CEO, you go to the psych and you tell the psych, you say, I'm okay, let me, let me get out of here. I don't hear no more voices. It's time for me to go back. Boom. But sometimes you get, you get, you get comfortable. Sometimes you get comfortable. I ain't going to front. I got comfortable there. I had a lot of sons there. You know what I'm saying? And sons, I'm talking about dudes that get locked up and 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 can't defend themselves and they're scared and they they look for somebody like me somebody that 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 fights that's going to take care of them make sure nobody fucks with them and even if they got to give you some cheddar or they got to go they go to commissary and they give you half the commissary because let me tell you right now in jail you got to survive bro especially if you got if you somebody that ain't making no money that that don't got no money don't got no family sending you money sending you that little 20 that little 30 that little 40 dollars you don't got that you're going to be fucked and then commissary over there is garbage. Okay, commissary and records is garbage. But not back then. Back then it was okay, but it was still a little expensive. It was it was still expensive. Nothing like upstate. Nothing like upstate. Nothing. Absolutely nothing like upstate. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so it was likely this fucking dude Goomba had the fucking house locked down. Locked down. Nigga used to come up, they the child and shit. I used to hear the nigga from the from my side, I used to hear this nigga scream. Yo, motherfucker, what the fuck you doing? Did I tell you to touch that? I'm hearing this dude, bro. So now, I'm hearing about this dude, and I'm hearing this motherfucker every time I get out the house. You know that my mom, the, the A and B gate. I used to, I was in charge of the bubble. I got the, you know, the CEO gave me the position to that. How you call the the house gang? I call it the mouse gang. But it's not, it's not bad because you get out. Everybody locks in. You get out. You can chill a little. A half an hour, hour, hour out. You know what I'm saying? You could look at certain TV channels if the CEO's cool with you. That nigga let you look at TV at like about 12 o'clock. That's how I had it. But anyway, this nigga going by, I'm looking and saying, I should look, look at the cell, and I should see the nigga walking by, looking at me like, you know what I'm saying? He already knew. He already knew that that I was in that house, and he, and he started hearing about me little and little, a little at a time, you know what I'm saying? Because the dude that was running the house that, I, that where I went in, uh, one, one, eight, eight, one, he was a black kid, nice dude, nice dude, fair dude, and he went upstate, and no question, I stood with the house. You understand what I'm saying? Because there was a lot of guys there, but a lot of guys that was there, you know, they was, they was two dudes was there for the box, my man Boo and my man Mafia, Little Mafia. They was there for the box, just like I'm doing, you understand what I'm saying, just like I did. And Goomba, Goomba, that white dude? That white dude never went to population. That dude went straight to the fucking M.O. house. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So this nigga was fronting, bro. So, you know, I'm hearing about this dude. And, and I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay. I don't like this dude. I don't like this dude. This dude's like, like, 
He really think, you know what I'm saying, that he's the man, but he really think that he could do shit. I mean, I'm seeing this nigga talking mad shit to people, bro. Like, 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 that was garbage, you know what I'm saying? So, <coughs> so, unfortunately, one day, you know what I'm saying, the CEO that was running the house, that was his house, Goomba jumped this dude. Well, he didn't jump him. He punched this dude in the face, and it was one of the crazy dudes, man. One of the dudes that really needed help. You understand what I'm saying? And he hit the dude because the dude sh took his shit and splashed it all over the wall, all over the sink. Goomba was the house gang. And, and you know what I'm saying? And he punched the dude because the dude did that. And the dude really, really, really was fucked up. There's no bullshit about it. There was no lie about that guy. The guy was really fucked up in the head. Anybody that takes shit, that takes feces, and, and throw it all over his cell, all over his bed, bass with it, I mean, like, puts it all over his body, starts eating it, bro, the man is not fucking right. Not right at all. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So there come this big motherfucking 6'4". At that time, he probably was like about 225 pounds, white boy with a fucking Nazi sign, come and punch that dude in the face, bro. And there was another white dude. There was another white dude that he hit, bro. And that was not right. You understand what I'm saying, guys? That was not fucking right at all, man. You know, so when I heard about that, B, that, that, that the CO that was in that house, that was running that house, he came up and, and he had enough of Bukumba. He had enough of that dude. You understand what I'm saying? So the CO knew that in the other side, the other side of the house, well, the side that I'm in is me and two or three other dudes that, you know what I'm saying, like Boo, Mafia, dudes that was running away from the box like I was doing. I, had, I can't fuck with the box. So us three, us three, me, Boo, and Mafia, Puerto Rican Mafia, Black Boo, we was in the house and the CO Pack this motherfucker, Goomba nigga, and he puts him in my house. Oh, God. He puts him in my house, and I know the CEO did that shit to teach this nigga a lesson. I know he did. You understand what I'm saying? I know he did, because when I'm over here, that, I'm, that, I'm, that he calls me Rivera, I go over there to see, I say, yeah, what's up? I'm in between the gate. Like, what's up? He, he cracks the gate, yeah, boom. He say, come over here, right next to the bubble. So I go to the bubble and he says, yo, listen. I'm sending such and such and such and going to the to your side. And he told me what happened. And I don't know why he told me that. I, I, really, I really think he told me that like that we could do something to this dude. I really believe that. <coughs> so so he told me such and such is going to your house. Listen, um, things might change because this guy is used to running this house, running this side of the house. And, you know, he's going to go to your house, so things might, you know what I'm saying, he might not like certain things. So, please, whatever you do, don't jump him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, telling me, whatever I do, don't jump him. So, that's like basically telling me, fuck this nigga up. So, I'm like, don't worry about it, man. We ain't going to fuck with the dude. As long as the dude don't disrespect me, doesn't disrespect none of the guys, none of the house gangs, everything is goody. You feel me? Everything is goody. So, he was like, okay. Boom, I go to the side. Ten minutes later, yo, Rivera. I'm like, yeah. He said, yo, did uh, five cells clean? Five cell, that's what that nigga Goomba was going to go to. Five cell. I'm in 25 cell. He's going to five cell. So I'm like, yeah. Fucking, uh, I think his name was Robinson. Robinson, a good dude, black brother. Uh, hell of a fucking port. I mean, a hell of a uh, house game. Nigga was cleaning everything, bro. He was a Nigga was cleaning everything, bro. Good fucking cleaner. So anyway, Robinson, I said, yeah, Robinson did it. So he was like, okay. Two minutes later, this comes this big fucking white boy. And when I'm looking at this nigga close, I'm like, damn, this motherfucker's big. You feel me? Nigga's big. So he comes in and 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 somebody screams on the day with yo goomba. So the nigga comes out all crazy, like, trying to, you know, trying to, don't be fucking calling my name like that, bro. I heard that, right? And I'm like, wow, okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, trying to front, like, like you know, instead of like, yo, what's up? Or just look at the door, like, yeah, whatever. Don't be calling my name like that, bro. 
So boom, he comes in, unpacks. I'm in the day room before the duel. We playing spades now. I'm not paying no mind this fucking goomba duel because long as he don't play himself, long as he knows where he's at, boom. Fit it go. I mean, you want to live with love, love, get down with the team. If you don't get down with the team, you don't buy by the orders, by the rules and regulations, you got to go. So, first thing he does, he comes to the day room and he gets, he picks up a chair and he puts it right next to the TV, like right in the front of the TV. Mafia is watching TV right in the front. Mafia looks at this nigga like up and down. Mafia was a little dude. Mafia was like about 5'2". But the dude had a fucking heart, bro. The dude had a heart. I ain't gonna front. Mafia was well respected in population. No question, bro. And like I said, Mafia was like me running from parole. And Boo. Boo? I think it was 7.30. Boo was a crazy motherfucker. <laughs> Boo was my dude. Boo used to like that dope. The first black dude, I swear to God, the first black dude that I ever met who fucked with dope. That nigga Boo had soap, right? Soap from New York. And I'm talking about soap that they used to get in the visit, like Irish Spring, this and all that and all this. In half. He had like a whole bag of soaps. Soap. They brand soap and broken in half. And I'm like, yo, Boo, what the fuck is all that? He was like, when he first came, you know what I'm saying? When, when he first came to the house, whatever. Like, yo, Boo, what the fuck is all those soaps? He was like, nah, man. I get my shit in that soap. So, Boo, back in the day, they used to give you, they used to let you take, um, they used to let you give soap in the visiting room. So what people used to do, they used to take the soap, right? And they used to grind and grind and make a hole with it. Make a hole and put four or five bags in there. Put the, the, the soap powder, put it right back in there and, and wet it a little bit and seed it. And that's it. You cannot tell no more of that soap or what. You cannot tell nothing. The soap is brand new. Especially Irish Spring. Because you know Irish Spring got that little wiggly shit. So they used to make it open. His wife used to, used to make a hole on it right in the middle. Take a couple bags, put it right there, put the soap powder back in there, and seal it. No question. The best fucking stash for, for, for drugs. The best. It was it, Yo, mad people to get mad shit like that, but nowadays they stopped all that because you can't get no more soap. That's fucked up, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's how Boo used to get it. That's why he had all those fucking bars of soap, different kinds of bars of soap broken in half. So... That, that was that was Boo's thing, dope, no question. Like I said, the first black dude I ever seen that had a habit of dope. So anyway, Mafia looks at this nigga up and down. Mm. Now it's time for dinner. What we call chow. On the chow. So on the chow, everybody got to get out the day room because people, the, the house gang got to set the day rooms up. You know, they got to put the chairs. They got to bring the food to the day room. They got to start serving the people, get the plates, the trays. You know, one person is giving out the trays. The other person is giving out the milk. The other person is giving out the beans. The other ones, you know, you got different dudes doing different things. Some, one, one is giving out the bread. One is giving out the Kool-Aid. You got two dudes serving the food. And you got one dude counting like, all right, the next three, the next four, the next five, whatever the fuck, until everybody gets their food. But the thing is, you gotta respect it. You get the fuck out the day room. So this nigga Goomba, from day one, he already was asking for it. The niggas in the day room telling everybody, yo, everybody get out the day room, blah, 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 blah. So now the only one that's in the day room is the dudes that belong there. Me, Mafia, Boo. Boo is getting ready to serve the food. Boo's like coming in with the food. Uh, Mafia's still chilling right there looking at TV and sometimes the seal turns off the TV. When the child comes in, the seal turns off the TV. TV goes off. You know what I'm saying? It may be once in the blue moon the TO the seals let the, the let the TV on. If dudes behave, the the CO let the, the TV on, or if they have a game or you know, something nice, he lets the TV on. So this is what fucking white boy didn't want to get out. He didn't want to get out. So I looked at the dude and I said, Yo, Poppy. He turned around, I said, your body, you got to get out the day room. So he looks at Mafia, and he's like, yo, but what you mean I got to get out the day room? What about him? And I looked at this nigga, and I'm like, yo, papi, don't worry about him, bro. You just got to get the fuck out the day room. Just like that, you just got you to get the fuck out the day room. So the nigga like, yo, what you mean? So now I'm looking at this dude now. I already see his problemas go. You feel me? What happens? CO spots that. CO walks to the gate. He says, yo, Rivera, everything okay in here? I'm like, yeah, everything is goody, man. Everything is all right. Don't worry about it. You know, misunderstanding. That's about it. I let the nigga chill. I let the nigga chill. You feeling me? 
let the nigga chill. Boom. Okay. Now, after the child finishes, oh yeah, and when I served this nigga the food, because I was, I was sometimes I used to be the server, but today, that day, that moment, I want to be the server. You understand what I'm saying? We had rice and chili. I remember, but it was white rice with chili. The good chili back in the time that used to be better. It was, the, it was one of the best food there. The, the rice and chili. So I get this nigga two scoops of rice. Boop, boop. Fucking boo. Get that nigga. A, <laughs> fucking boo. Get that nigga a half of a scoop of chili. Blah. That nigga talking about yo, what's up? He like he's not walking. He, like he got his tray right there. Like he wants some more chili. So Boo looks at the nigga and say, yo, that's it, man. That nigga said, yo, but wait a minute. Yo, you gave that nigga two scoops. And Boo came out and said, yo, I gave that nigga two scoops because he cleans up in this motherfucking house. So dudes that clean up in the house, they're going to get extra food. You understand what I'm saying? Fair. You feel me? Fair. So the dude like, yo, man, look, man, I'm not going to be going for this shit. Nigga, white boy motherfucker comes out of some bullshit. I ain't going to be going for that shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going for that shit. So I looked at the door and I said, yo, bro, listen, man. First you came in here, B. You, you sitting down, you fucking violated by staying in the day room. Now you want to start some shit because you want some more fucking chili, B. I said, yo, boo, get that nigga an extra scoop, B. Make this starving motherfucker eat, bro. So the niggas, yo, this motherfucker, look what he does, bro. I thought to the boo, yo, boo, get the nigga two more fucking, get the nigga another scoop, bro. Starving motherfucker. The nigga takes the tray and, he, and he's holding like this and he just lets it drop. Blah! Purposely. Purposely, bro. So when I look like this, Boo looking like this, me and Boo is ready to go rush this motherfucker, bitch. Me and Boo is ready to bust this nigga in the head, bro. Seriously. Motherfucking mafia comes out of nowhere. Boom! Hits this motherfucker in the face, B. Why he my, why mafia hits this nigga in the face. Dude just looked at Mafia like he faced it, bro. Like he like 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 it was nothing. This nigga looked at Mafia and caught Mafia. Boo! Mafia goes down, bro. Once Mafia goes down, me and Boo. Me and Boo just went over on this nigga. I'm talking about, bro, we fucked up the whole food, bro. I'm talking about I jumped the top of the table. Where the food, the, the 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 pantry, the food, I mean not the pantry, the food, the, the food that comes, the metal thing that, that the food comes in. I jumped the top of the fucking table that's worth to my mother's grave. Everything I fucking love, B. I jumped at the top of that table, B, and I jumped on this nigga, B. Boo came around the fucking food. The, the table where, the, where we had the food. The food is all over the fucking place, Bill. Food is all over the fucking place, bro. Boo comes and grabs this nigga by the neck. When I hit this nigga, then I, then I jump the top of Boo just comes out nowhere and just grabs this nigga by the neck. But Boo got him by the neck. Now, this nigga, I'm telling you, this nigga was big, bro. This nigga was fucking your mongo, B. You know what I'm saying? For the age of 20 years old, the nigga was, you know, you could tell the nigga used to work out in the world. Or the nigga was just born big. You know what I'm saying? Bigger than me. Bigger than, bigger than me and taller than me. Boo, Boo was like, I was 6'2. I've always, always been 6'2. Boo was like 5'10. But Boo's kind of skinny, though. You know what I'm saying? So when Boo grabs the nigga, I, I jump. I'm on top of this nigga. Beretta's knocked the fuck. I mean, Beretta, God rest you. Talking about big, God rest you. So Mafia, Mafia's in the floor, dazed, bro. That nigga's dazed, bro. Like, 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 really drunk. The nigga's drunk, punched, bro. Punch drunk, whatever the punch drunk, whatever you want to call it. Now, when I jump on top of this nigga, that Boo, that Boo grabs him by the neck. The nigga falls down. We all, us three, falls down. Boom. While we falling down, B, the white boy hits himself against the fucking metal tray. The metal, the metal thing where the food goes, that's like metal. It's not, it's not real fat or like that, but it's metal. 